Well guys, if you've been following along with these series of videos, you'll know that I said the last time that I wasn't going to do any more gasket videos until uh, about the time that the tests were done. Now, that didn't turn out to be true. So if you haven't seen those other videos, I recommend that you go watch them after this video. Again, this video stands on its own, but they will provide a little bit more background on what I'm trying to do here. One of the most common comments that I got in the last couple videos was about the hardness of TPU. Uh, most TPUs are rated at about 95A on the shore hardness scale. Uh, my measurements for my material have been more in the 85 to 90 range, but regardless, uh, I said in the last, in one of the last videos that uh, the hardness for like a, a typical rubber would be in this 85 to 75 range, which would be a little bit softer than TPU. Uh, and after doing some research on Google, it looks like many, many rubber gaskets and rubber O-rings are really more in the 75 range or e even a little bit softer. It got me thinking, is it possible to, to adjust the hardness with some printing tricks? As you saw in the intro to this video, I think the answer is yes. But before we get into that, let me just discuss something about your typical gasket material. So this is a typical paper gasket. It's actually kind of a heavy paper gasket. And it's a, a cylinder-based gasket for a Triumph motorcycle. So let's check what it's durometer would read. I'd say that's about 86. Let's also check it on a hard surface, registering about 90 there. If you haven't seen my other video about what this is, it's called Shore Durometer, uh, and it is meant to measure hardness in the Shore A scale. So what we have here is a typical thick paper gasket. We can be reasonably confident that it's in the, it's in the range of 86, 87 to 91, 92, somewhere in that range. So knowing that, we already know that TPU is actually not that much harder, if at all, than a certain paper gaskets. In certain situations, that, that argument is moot. However, the next piece that I was going to make was a valve cover gasket for the mower that I'm using for experiments. I've already made a carb to intake manifold gasket. was then going to make a valve cover gasket because after doing some testing again in the other videos, I saw that the heat range was within what TPU should be able to handle. Because I'm dealing with a pressed sheet metal valve cover, which is, you know, it's not perfectly flat. And it does have a ridge here along the edge that will indent into the cover gasket, which as you can see is a pretty thick gasket. It's not unlike this gasket. In fact, it's probably nearly the same material. Let's try to print it softer. And what I mean by printing softer is I can't change the properties of TPU. I can't change the actual properties of the plastic. But I can print it in a, in a way that effectively the overall part is softer. When I say softer, it actually means if this were PLA, I would actually be printing it weaker but because TPU is so durable and, and prints so well, and sticks together so well, we're not really getting weaker, we're getting softer. How do you print a plastic part so, so it's weaker? Uh, in my head, there's three ways. You can use less infill, you can use less perimeters uh, or walls, or you can use less top and bottom layers. Well, I don't want to mess with top and bottom layers because I want this thing to be relatively sealed. I have to have some sort of perimeter because that provides structure, you know, it provides the shape and the structure to the thing. But I need to design the perimeter in a certain way. And I'll explain that in a second. That leaves me with infill. So I played around with different uh, amounts of infill, different, different, fill, uh, different fill density. And that's what you saw in the beginning of the video. So I have a bunch of corners of this gasket, basically, because I wanted something that, that had sort of the shape, but I didn't want to print the whole thing every time because that's just a waste of plastic. I went 10%, 15%, 25%, 35%, 45%, 55%. And at that point, I decided that I uh, really wasn't getting much out of it, so I just skipped ahead and did a, one at 100% just to, as a comparison piece. I'll talk about what infill I used in a second, but this is basically what I saw. This of course is not to be taken as absolutes because while 
All these are printed exactly the same except for the infill percentage. What you print with your brand of filament and the other myriad settings that you use uh, will affect the result. But I got anywhere from 65A to 85A with 10% to 55% infill. Two angle perimeter walls, three top and bottom layers. And as I said before, above 55% it's just diminishing returns. You're, you're just you're not getting much different than 100% infill. I have not changed the properties of the plastic at all. Plastic when it's printed is printed in lines and each one of those individual lines is still 95A, 90A, whatever you want to call it. But as a total part it is softer than shore hardness that the actual material registers. So I mentioned that I had to do something about the walls and the reason I have to do something about the perimeters is because I still need the structure of the perimeter but I don't want the perimeters to be lines on top of lines and the reason for that is because lines on top of lines are all the same hardness as the lines so what I would end up with is a gasket that is softer in the center than it is on the edges. And that's not what I want. I want as much consistency across the plane of the part as possible. So I did a little bit of design trickery so that what we ended up with was lines printing at an angle, at a 45 degree angle. Basically all I did was put a chamfer on one side on one edge of the part. That made, makes each line of the wall print slightly to one side of the uh, line underneath it. That gives me a little bit of, it's almost like a pivot. Another way I thought about doing this was to do to where you do a chamfer or a fillet on both sides of the gasket. But that really introduces some minor printability issues that uh, if I started to talk about them this video would be an hour long. The next thing was what to use for infill. Once you get below 20% maybe, you start to lose top layer smoothness because the printer is laying lines over sparser and sparser infill and eventually it is trying to bridge between those infill lines. In other words, it is trying to fill across those lines and subsequently the lines start to sag and that means your top layer is potentially going to sag as well. You start to lose your, your top layer smoothness and I wanted to try to keep the top layer as as smooth as possible. So I decided to use gyroid infill and gyroid's nice because it's a wavy infill and for a lower density it seems, at least visually, it seems that it covers more area and there have, therefore has more support for the plastic going over top of it. I don't know if that's actually the case. In my looking through the different infills available that seemed to be the best option for what I was what I was attempting here. You can kind of see it through there. You can also see that bottom layer is extremely smooth, in fact it's glass shiny. And the reason for that is because I use a plain glass bed, no, no coating on it whatsoever. Used about 40 degrees uh, on a 40 degree C on heat on the bed. That made everything smooth together and make basically glass. But you can kind of see in there the infill, all those little spots of light, that's the infill. So as far as percentage goes, I went with 25%. Just looking at the parts, it kind of gave me the best balance between uh, the, the surface finish on the top and uh, the softness. So that combined with three layers on top, three layers on bottom, gave me a measurement of 76, 75, 76. That's about what we measured before. Uh, when you print the whole thing, it's a little bit different because the uh, infill will will put itself in different places but it's not going to be exact as I said at the beginning of this no, there's no absolutes here see we measure it over in the corner it's a little bit better it's a little or it's a little softer it's in the 72 73 range so overall we're in I would say the 70 to 75 range so I even made a softer gasket I think this one came out to about 68 it's got a bunch of angles in it and whatnot but it's somewhere in the, there we go, somewhere in the 68 range on the edge. And what this is is a, is a gas cap gasket. It goes in a gas cap like this, actually attaches to this piece. This is a vented gas cap, which is why this is like this. And there's 
some holes that are in this part which I need to drill out because they kind of they filled themselves up I only made them one millimeter so they filled themselves up but no problem these two pieces snap together this plastic piece snaps into the cap this is the original by the way all that was left of the original these pieces snap into the cap and then the sealing is done with this rim here and the venting is done through these holes goes up those holes give access to this open area this will be open area once this is snapped together I don't want to snap together right now because I don't want to break this piece uh, and you can see there's some little channels in here that the air comes around goes through the little nipple there that goes into the cap that goes through that hole in the cap and that's how the air gets out or in and that brings up the last point of this video fuel tolerance still getting comments that TPU is not tolerant of fuels it will break down in fuel I'm already testing this on the mower because the gasket on the carburetor will have fuel going by it all the time but it's not soaking in fuel and, and I will say for just as many comments that I've had that TPU will break down in fuel I've had just as many comments that says I made a carburetor bowl gasket out of it and it was and it's still going you know I did this a year ago and it's still going well today so just because there's a lot of people out there that have different conceptions of what what I'm saying I'm working with one single material from one manufacturer so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of these spare pieces one of these test pieces and uh, I'm gonna throw it this bottle of olive oil which is actually gasoline and leave it in there as long as it takes see it's in there at the end of the mowing season when I review all these things I'll take a look at what this is and I will leave one of these out beside it or on top of it like so so we can compare the two I actually printed one twice accidentally this is a, a 45 as you see and my control piece will also be a 45 so we'll use those because they're exactly the same there they are completely submerged in there and pure brand new gasoline tighten that up see if they survive there it is all back together I wish I'd done a little bit better job on those holes but stuff's tough you got it's hard to uh, manipulate after you've already done it put our new cap on so the test on this now I don't know you can hear that but I don't know whether that's going to be enough uh, until I actually drive it and what will happen is it'll stop giving it fuel because it's not it's not sucking in air behind it but it sounds pretty good to me carb gasket, a fuel tank gasket, and a valve cover gasket on it now. All TPU. So, see if this is going to work. 